Welcome to our second Spice Up Your Zoom meeting and Check for Understanding featuring quizzes this time. Um, I'm also joined by Elizabeth Montgomery. She is our geology faculty at PAC. Um, Elizabeth, if you want to introduce yourself more than that, I'll give you a sec. <laughs> Yes, um, I've been teaching at PAC for four years now, and this semester I've been really trying to incorporate gamification and simulations into my classroom for active learning and experiential learning opportunities. Awesome. Yes, we are so lucky to be joined with her by her today. She's going to share some really great insights. She's used quizzes in her classroom this semester through Zoom. So she has some great, um, I, not only ideas, but also just things to help you guys when you're implementing quizzes in your classroom. Um, so to start off with our Zoom session norms, um, just if you can mute yourself for now, but feel free to um, unmute yourself and ask a question just while we're sitting here and chatting um, and I, one of us is speaking, if you can have yourself muted. You can also submit your questions in the chat. We're joined by one other person from our TLC, Mallory Alvarez. Um, she is here monitoring the chat, so she'll stop us if there's any questions that we haven't addressed. Um, or if she sees something else pop up in the chat. So Mallory, if you want to say hi. Hi, go good it. morning. Thank you all for joining us. And if you have any questions, I will be the one that will either answer them in the chat or I will be sure to bring them to Amanda's attention. Nice to meet all of you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mallory. Um, also, this session is being recorded. Um, I know I've mentioned this before, but I actually made sure I included the link. Um, all of our sessions for our webinar, as well as things from Convocation and just um, Mallory's been working hard to create some like help videos for Canvas and Zoom as well. They are all on our TLC YouTube channel. Um, while we are housed at PAC, anybody can subscribe to that channel. So if you wanna go back and look at the information at any time, all of those videos are there. So please subscribe to our channel. It's a new thing. I feel like I'm a famous YouTuber now saying that. Um, we also have a five to 10 minute planned Q&A session slash practice session at the end. Um, so hopefully we'll have enough time to get to that. We should, we've planned it out. I think Elizabeth and I are set. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna start with the purpose. Our purpose is similar to our Nearpod purpose to discuss formative assessment and to share techniques and tools to help form formatively assess an audience. And that audience can be your students, it can be fellow staff members, it can be other faculty members, depending on what you're using it for. And today our tool is quizzes, which is spelled fun. Um, so it's spelled like quiz, but then with an extra I-Z-Z -Z at the end. Um, so after this session, my, our goal is that you'll be able to feel confident to create a new quiz in quizzes, search for existing quizzes, find existing questions to add to your quiz, and download quiz data. And then last but not least, use quizzes in a variety of ways in your classroom or Zoom meeting. We're going to be saying the word quiz and quizzes a lot, so I'm just going to apologize in advance because it's going to come up. <laughs> Um, real quick, Amanda, I'm yeah. going to start the record. Oh, I think it actually already is. I think Julie set it to automatically record in the new webinars. Really? I have yeah. a little cloud dot recording. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and then I will be posting our subscription to YouTube in our chat link. And maybe Mallory, if you want to record it just as a backup in case I'm wrong, but it started, I think it started recording as soon as we came in. At least okay. that's what I'm seeing. But if you want to record just in case I'm, I'm wrong, since we've never done this before on this <laughs> link, <laughs> I'm totally fine with that. All right. Okay, so similar to the Nearpod session, I just wanted to start with a quick overview of what is formative assessment. So formative assessment refers to um, almost like some people call it informal assessment. It's not something that's necessarily tied to a high stakes test or something that has to be graded. While you can add a quiz to formative assessment, it's they're meant to be quick and they're meant to be easy on the instructor um, in terms of getting feedback to students. So they're also the goal is to inform our in-process teaching and learning modification. So a formative assessment is something that if you see your students struggled with a certain concept, in that moment, you can go back and review it, or maybe in the next lecture, you can go back and review it. It's something that informs us as the facilitator as to how our participants are following along with the information we're giving them. It also helps students self-identify their strengths and weaknesses, it gives them vocabulary that they can catch on to, like, oh, I keep missing a question about this, maybe that's where I'm struggling. 
and it gives opportunity for faculty to recognize students um, that are excelling or struggling. Um, and like I said before, generally low stakes and do not need to be graded. Um, some quick examples, because I know a lot of you were in the Nearpod session too. I just wanted to review it for anyone who's joining us for the first time. Um, some examples of formative assessment, entrance and exit tickets. Asking your students to write one to two sentences to identify the main point of a lecture, or maybe ask a quick question before about the previous lesson before class starts. Um, low stakes quizzes and polls. So this is kind of what we're talking about today, using quizzes or Kahoot as interactive quiz games. And you can also add Zoom polls to check in during lessons. Um, quizzes can also be used as an entrance or exit ticket. And I know Elizabeth will talk about that more as well. Um, another example of formative assessment is the muddiest point, allowing students to identify what um, concept is least clear to them after all lessons in a unit or chapter. Uh, be careful with this one, just because if you focus too much on the muddiest point, which is kind of almost seems like a negative, like it's what I didn't understand, the focus might become too negative. So this is good for using maybe once a unit, just to say, hey, this unit is over, what was something that you struggled with? And then you know you can address it in a review. But this is not necessarily a good formative assessment for a day-to-day -day concept. And then last but not least, self-assessment allowing students to develop some sort of nonverbal system to indicate that they need more time to understand. Now, I know that that can be hard in a virtual setting, but it can be as simple as sending out a poll that's still somewhat nonverbal. Um, when you're in the classroom, I've seen some people do some cards like green, yellow, and red, like a stoplight. Like green means they're good to go. Yellow means they need a little bit more time, but they're kind of understanding. And then red is like, help me, I, I need it, I'm struggling. So these self-assessments can also be done in quizzes. It allows students to really take the time to see for themselves how they're doing. It kind of gives them that ownership of their learning. So before we jump into more about quizzes, I wanted to give us five minutes, similar to the last time, to go into a breakout room and just discuss two things. What types of formative assessment are you already doing in your classroom? And remember, formative assessment is, again, informal assessment. It doesn't have to be that you're using some sort of tool or digital platform to do formative assessment. You can think back to even when you were face to face. What did you do in your classroom to check in with your students? And then how did you use that information and that you gained from these formative assessments? So those are our two questions, just five minutes in small breakout rooms. Let's see, we have 25 people. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to open these rooms and you're going to be with about three to four people. So I think that um, five minutes should be fine for all of us to get a chance to talk. Yeah. So we'll be back in five minutes. All right, welcome back everyone. I see a lot more people jumping back into the main session. Um, before we move on to actually talk about and experience quizzes um, and remember um, I don't know why, but my meeting settings are where you are muted immediately when you come back from the breakout rooms. So don't forget to unmute yourself. But um, does anyone have anything to share from their room, something that you learned or something that you yourself um, use for formative assessment that you'd like to share? So I can go. Um, one of the things I use is called Poll Everywhere, and it's free if you have 25 um, participants or less for, for the poll. Um, I have 28, so I purchased the, the service, but um, basically you can do word clouds, they have clickable images, you could do would you rather, um, you could, you know, um, it can actually allow the students to fill in um, answers um, in certain points. So I like to use that as kind of a formative assessment. Um, I like that they can customize their answer. So um, especially for word clouds, what do you already know already? Um, about the subject, I like to use Poll Everywhere. Well, thank you. Elizabeth, that's called Poll Everywhere, like P-O-L-L? -L? Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the, um, Perfect. I, I made a, a Poll Everywhere for this uh, break, uh, for this session, just in case. Sometimes I like to have something just, just in case. So um, it's just a clickable, clickable image. If you want to, you know, where in the world would you like to travel? But, you know, Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've played around with Pull Everywhere, but I'm glad to hear that it works well for you. So thanks for sharing that in the chat. Does anyone else? 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, that, excuse me. Elizabeth, that's a free download? Um, if it's less than 25 participants, yes, they do have free accounts. If it's more than 25, it, you, uh, you're, um, it, there, it does cost. So for my class, it, I have more than 28 students, so I went ahead with the, the one that, that, um, that does have the cost. And it's nice to see you, Jim. <laughs> Agreed. Any Bye. other share outs from the breakout rooms? I'll do a share out. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, because I can't see myself. But anyway, one that two of us were using was that after we cover a concept, we'll ask students to list five things that they learned from that unit or from that little segment. Now, one of us will used to have the students submit those five in, on paper. And then now what, I've forgotten what she did, but anyway, then another way I like to do it is I will use a page from Canvas. I add a page and then I write down whatever they tell me. And I do require them to write complete sentences to me. And so then I just leave that page in the module. So like if somebody's absent or something, they'll know what we covered and some of the key ideas. Another lady talked about 321, which I had never heard of. And I think 321 is you write down three things you remember. Then you write down two ideas you'd like to think more about. And then you write down one question. That's, a, that's perfect. I forgot about three, two, one. I've never heard of it, but I like that too. So anyway, that's what came out of our breakout room. Thank you for sharing. And I like the idea that you had about those five, those key ideas and keeping them in the canvas shell so students can refer back to them. It's kind of like they're adding to their own set of communi like communal notes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Any other share outs? Um, I'll share. I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say in our room, we both had a very similar method for formative assessment. So during lecture, we would just stop and ask questions. Um, I think this is helpful even now um, to make sure students are still like listening and pay attention. And then you can use that, those questions to kind of say like, okay, well, they're not understanding what I'm trying to tell them. And then you can extend that topic. So I try and, you know, ask questions that are, I think, important to pick up from what we just talked about. Um, so it's really informal, just making sure they're there. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Another one that was brought up in my breakout room is, they, I think they said fist or fingers. Um, they said they, it was from their K through 12 days where basically they would do one through five, how many fingers basically you're understanding. Or they said you could also use thumbs up, thumbs down, or neutral, um, which you could use the old school emojis or you can, <laughs> you can do reactions on Zoom, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, these are all such great suggestions. I just wanted to make sure we had some time to talk about it before we get into our tool that we're talking about, because I think it's good to hear what our colleagues are doing. So thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. Those are excellent ideas. So um, before we move into, Elizabeth and I thought, before we move into all the how to create these quizzes and what does this look like, we thought it might be good for you guys to experience as your students would. And then I'm gonna run through it on the faculty side too, on the instructor side. So this is actually not a quiz. With quizzes, you can also create polls. So we've created a would you rather quiz. So if you have a phone, or if you have, want to use your computer, your iPad, whatever device you have with a browser, I'm also going to put the link in the chat. Let me get that. And this is a quick eight question, meant for fun, way to show you what it looks like on, on the quizzes view for your students. Let me know if it's working too, because I did do this last night to have it ready for today. 
My, mine says invalid game code. Okay. No. So then let me try this again. I was wondering if it would work um, because I started it last night. <laughs> I just kind of crossed my fingers yeah. and hoped it would work today, um, but it didn't. But that's okay because it's really easy to generate a new quiz yeah, mine, code. Mine says invalid too, too ma'am. <laughs> okay. No problem because I was prepared for this. All right. Here's the new quiz code. <laughs> And let me copy the new link in the chat too. You can use a nickname, you can use your regular name, whatever you want. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and hit start, but the join code will be at the top of the screen. This is actually one of Elizabeth's suggestions. Once you have one person in, hit start. <laughs> and if you didn't join in time, it'll be at the top. And you'll see that there's a leaderboard for this one, but it's actually just whoever's answering it the fastest right now, because this is a poll. So you're not getting points for like correctness, <laughs> since there's no correct answer really. And since I'm showing you all the leaderboard right now, you can start to see when students are finished or your participants are finished. So I know there are eight questions. So I'm starting to see a lot of my participants reach that eight question. So I can kind of tell when I can start showing the, um, the results or um, move on with whatever I'm doing to look at it later. So right now I'm showing the leaderboard. Um, I can also choose to show only the top five people which again, we're taking a quiz, so you're all the top five. So it's probably going to confuse <laughs> the um, system since it's a polling quiz. But you can see students names, they have a little fun emoji or like avatar for you. Um, and when you actually sign in, it can generate this random name for you. So if you don't feel like using your own name, that's fine. Now, since we have 16, are we getting close to being done? I'm going to go ahead and show the questions. And Elizabeth, I might need your help here just because I haven't done this uh, specific one before. Can I show the answers or no? Um, I know that you can go to the reports. I think okay. you have to go out of it and then go to the report section and then it will show it. Okay, that's kind of what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so then let me go back to the leaderboard. I know we have a couple people still working, but just to um, move along for right now, because it's not going to, I'm just going to go ahead and end this so we can kind of see the results so you can see what we're doing um, today. Are we sure we want to end? Yes. <laughs> and then all done. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. Now we can go to the questions or no, still, there we go. Okay, so we can see the results on here. I'm sorry, I've never done a poll. That's a new feature for me. So I wanted to test out, you know, in front of everyone. Uh, <laughs> so when you're doing questions like this, you can show the results. So we have, would you rather play sports or only video games? <coughs> and you can see how many people voted for each one. Now, Elizabeth, do you want to chime in and kind of say how you've used this before in your class? Because I know you have. <laughs> um, what, you know, when when I use it, I usually um, it's usually a quiz feature, so it's you know usually a, a right or wrong answer. So I basically point out like, hey, most of the respondents chose this particular answer. Um, the correct answer is this, you know, and maybe we could have a, a quick discussion about it and 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 review that part. Or maybe um, if I notice something that it's um, like pretty central, it might come up again on a review. Um, so, 
Perfect. And I know some people use this one, the would you rather, as an icebreaker. So like for me, I wanted to see this answer. Would you rather be stranded on a desert island or trapped in an elevator? I figured we, I, I mean, we have one person that wants the elevator, but you'd be alone, apparently, it seems. There's no <laughs> other 15 people. Um, I also liked this one because I felt like this person did a great job of making a Zoom um, nice, fun chat. Mute your mic or turn off your camera. Yeah, definitely turn off the camera. I'm there with you. And then um, I also really liked this last question. So you can have all these silly questions, but then at the end, you actually care about this answer, right? Would you rather be praised in front of the class or be praised privately? So that way you can kind of see how your students prefer to receive um, positive com compliments. And later on when we go over the re reports, I'll show you how you can pull it to where you can see specifically just which students responded to one-on-one -on -one versus praise in front of the class. So that was kind of our quick intro to just show you a little bit of what quizzes can do. So this is one usage of it. Just a quick poll, similar to how Zoom polls exist, but uh, you have a little bit more fun with, a little bit more fun options with it. Um, so I'm gonna turn the mic over to Elizabeth and she's gonna talk about what it is and how she's used it in her classroom. So Elizabeth, take it away. <laughs> so, um... I, le I first le learned about quizzes about uh, three months ago, and what kind of kickstarted my love for it is that a lot of it's individually pay paced and it's free. It's a digital platform that um, you can um, do participant paced formative assessments in a fun and engaging way. Um, and it can be played on many different devices. You can play it on the computer, on your phone, and oftentimes students have both their laptop and their phone, so it, it um, can work on either device. And you can create a quiz from scratch, but the way that I like to use it is the quiz bank, because that saves me a lot of time. Um, and, you know, I've looked for, um, I was really surprised when I looked on quizzes for how much is available. Um, like, for example, I teach geology, so when I looked up, um, minerals. I wanted to see a, a you know, quiz, um, and I found a variety of options, and, you know, I, I was kind of help, you know, you always have that healthy spec, uh, skepticism of, you know, um, this, this could, is this just for a younger crowd, uh, but in fact, I looked at um, the assessments, and um, even though it said high school, um, it would be a great incorporation. It's a, it's a high quality quiz uh, for the minerals. And so um, um, it can be a combination of those two. Um, I, I use it for both fun and I also use it for um, more academic applications. And you can, it has a lot of flexibility. It can be used both synchronously. You can do a live quiz or you can make, use it asynchronously. You can assign it as homework. So I like the flexibility of that. Now, um, in general, I um, um, like to use it live because I do a lot of uh, live Zoom sessions, um, but also it's a free service, um, which we'll talk about the benefits for that later on for faculty and staff. So um, you can use this in your meetings, whether you're faculty or staff, um, there's a lot of applications. And um, I personally used a Gmail to sign up for it. It was really simple. I just logged into my Gmail and it, it quickly brought there, but you can also use your Alamo College's email. Um, and there's an app um, and there's a, a, back, a different background for teachers than there is for students, um, but they don't need to download it. They don't need to sign up for an account necessarily to even access the quiz. They just have to enter that, that nickname like, um, like you just did. Now, why do I use quizzes? Um, I, I find, you know, um, uh, there's a, a couple of things. For example, I really like um, that it helps some overcome some of those barriers for gamification and active learning. Um, so as I talked about this semester, I am incorporating gamification and simulations in my classroom for active learning. Um, the top two barriers for gamification or active learning tends to be cost and time restrictions. So uh, because it's free, um, it doesn't have that barrier. Funding can be a barrier for gamification. With time, 
It has large searchable libraries, so it can save you a lot of time. Um, you know, for example, I talked with Amanda the other day. I wondered what, how far could I take this? For example, I searched for integrals, and I found several different integral quiz, quizzes. I even this week um, had an, an aquifers activity that I gave to my students, and I did it the night before, and there were several aquifer quizzes available on just that narrow subject. So there's a lot of options, um, you know, just, just look in the bank, um, and it can help you be prepared ahead of time. Um, now, the appropriate level is, display, is, is displayed, but like I said, um, I've looked back in some of the high school um, content, and it is still applicable, um, high quality quizzes, and you could search by topic and level. Um, and like I said, you've probably seen that, that fun side that uh, would you rather, um, but it can also be academic. I use it mostly for academic, um, for gamification purposes, but I do use it because of those high quality quizzes. Now, and Elizabeth, one second, sorry, I know you're on a roll, but we have someone with their hand raised. Sure. Um, Kenton, do you have a question? My mistake, ma'am, that was actually on accident. Sorry about okay. that. Okay, I wasn't sure. I like to check in just to make sure that there wasn't something that we missed, but I'm sorry, Elizabeth, Go, keep going. No, no, not a problem. No my, my apologies. And then there's the inter entertainment aspect, as we saw today. There's a lot of would you rathers, um, a lot of icebreakers. So if you have some time to fill where you basically need to um, start something off or put people at ease, those are all good options to start off uh, your day in your classroom. Um, you can also, you know, we kind of compare Kahoot and quiz, quizzes. Kahoot is a very common um, application that's used in the high school, so when they transition into college, they feel very comfortable with it, and I feel like quizzes is on, on par with Kahoot. Um, one of the things that I like about quizzes in, um, in, in above Kahoot is that um, you, you are able to do more individually paced assignments, whereas Kahoot is more of a class-wide option. Um, you look at the class as a whole, um, but quizzes, it's kind of their own individual um, answers and it's more individually based. And feel free to um, add questions in the chat. I, I get, I, I'm feel fueled by whenever somebody types a question in the chat. I, it just makes me so, so happy. Um, what to know um, before using it. Um, decide ahead of time if you want participants to log in to use a nickname or be graded on their performance. I still use my, have my students select a nickname um, and it, it will say the nickname on the report. Um, and also um, um, decide ahead of time if you want your quiz to be individual or team-based. I like individual um, because I want to know what they know. Um, you can also make it instructor-paced or student-paced, uh, whether you have a time constraint or you wanna see how far students will go. Um, if you have the, the, the time to do so, you can make it a live assignment or you can have it as assigned as a homework, as an asynchronous activity. So there's a lot of flexibility to that. Now, what are some of the things I like to do? I like to test it out with my family and friends. Um, so I give it to my family and friends before I show my students. One, um, I just wanna make sure that it's fun and two, um, make sure it's appropriate. Um, it's, it's not too easy, not too hard, that type of thing. Um, and so I, I test that out ahead of time. Um, you, I'm also finding that during um, our Zoom sessions, um, we have a lot of extra time where there's kind of some dead space. And for students, that might be a little bit uh, of attention for them. So I use that um, for administrative task time. Um, they're, um, this is like when I'm arranging people in their breakout rooms. Um, when they're downloading or uploading documents in Zoom or off of Canvas, if they have technology issues. So it's a lot of um, uh, way to kind of um, entertain them while, while there's that dead time. Now I see that Jim has a question. Jim? 
You raise your hand? Yes, I do. Uh, uh huh. Oh, I have to unmute. Oh, I am unmuted. Uh, <clears throat> when the when the uh, class chooses a nickname, do do the classmates see the nickname? Because I get when I ask them to use a nickname, sometimes I get rather risque nicknames. And uh, as long as the other classmates don't see them, I don't say anything. If they're on the leaderboard, they will see it. But yeah, I, I do think that is a good reminder to remind the students to have an appropriate nickname. And uh, there's a way in the settings that you can um, have quizzes assign a nickname to your students. So if you're concerned about that, uh, like it's a, you can just let it do its thing, and it does some really weird things, but they're all appropriate. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so. I'm not concerned. It's just every once in a while I get a I I get someone that's uh, feeling their oats. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> yeah, um, and obviously you uh, in general they only typically see the leaderboard, but um, yes, um, you can always, we talk about this kind of the pitfalls later on, how I, I usually, the, for the leaderboard, I leave that off the screen. I, I don't share that part just because, you know, FERPA issues and, and for those type of scenarios where there's an inappropriate name. Um, I also feel like it creates mm -hmm. a really um, positive presence in the classroom, you know, like I said, because it you know, kind of breaks that tension of that downtime. I feel like, you know, it, it just kind of puts everybody at ease and it shows your personality. Sometimes, you know, I'm kind of distance, distant with my students, but it gives me an opportunity to feel personable for them. Um, also, it can be a supplement to the lecture material. So um, I, you know, for example, talk about minerals. I have a whole lecture on minerals, but then I've only covered you know, three or four minerals within that lecture as an example. With quizzes, I can go even further with that. They can be exposed to even more minerals before maybe they do an activity or before they, they have um, more application um, uh, assignments that are, are um, upcoming. So, what do I use quizzes for? I use it for pre and, pre and post formative assessments. I do it a lot just for fun, just as a way to engage them. And also just, just as an exposure without even tying necessarily a, an, a grade to it. Because, you know, if, if it's informal, sometimes it's just okay if, if they just have fun with it. Um, also, you have the number of choices of, of how many attempts they can make. Um, now, on the first attempt, what I tend to do is an incomplete or complete option, um, and they can upload that screenshot into Canvas. Sometimes I do both first attempts and final attempts. You could choose to do one or the other. For the final attempt, what I usually do, and I did this this week, is I make it proportional to their grade. So I have them upload a screenshot into Canvas. Now, one of the things about the screenshot is um, I notice when it's off of the app, it just says guest, but I can compare it to the reports um, and, you know, ensure that they have the correct, um, the correct uh, grade in their, in their Canvas uh, shell. Now, um, it also has reports, which um, what I like to do and use them for is I identify those questions where the class is struggling and I can either address that right then and there, um, bring up, hey, you know, question this, which was X and X, um, you know, the class really struggled. And that's where we can do our reflective uh, learning, where we basically figure out what, what's, where, where our muddiest point is, and then address it right in that time, or it can come up later in our review. Um, and then another feature, which I like about quizzes, is the redemption questions. These feature where the students can um, basically get feedback and have a second chance at um, at uh, that question uh, within the quizzes. Uh, so you don't even have to grant the option, it automatically does it. 
What are some of the pitfalls to avoid? Be careful with FERPA. Be careful when you share your screen. Um, don't display the overview screen to protect your students' privacy, even if they're using a nickname. Just, you know, um, and also um, one of the things is uh, make sure you press start. I have, uh, I actually had one full day where we couldn't even do the quizzes because I forgot to hit the start button and I figured it out um, the next day. But um, it, um, don't forget to press the start button. Um, and then also adjust your settings ahead of time. Um, some, t some features are more time consuming than others. Okay, Elizabeth, anything else you wanna add before we start practicing? <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about quizzes? Should I just ask my question? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'm kind of playing on it. Um, there was one, you know, and I looked up library information. So there's some that were already produced by other universities. Can I take that and modify it to our college? Yes, yes. actually, that's what I'm, a, I'm about to go through, kind of like a run through. Okay, yeah, just, cool. there's a save button. Here's a save button. Oh, save and exit. Okay. I can also resume because I was playing on it. Uh, another thing that I saw was flashcards. Are you going to explain what that is? I saw it yesterday and I can show you before we leave today. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. You. Yes. Keep asking questions while I switch my share screen if you have them. I didn't have a question I was just going to share. I've, I've used quizzes this semester, and I actually use the instructor paste version um, where you're, we all do the questions together, kind of like um, Kahoot. And the reason why I like quizzes better is because the students don't have to see my screen in order to participate. They can do it on their own screen. They see the questions and the answers or answer choices, whereas in Kahoot, um, they only see like the little boxes. So they have to also be able to see my Zoom screen in order to participate. And so I had some issues with that um, like during the summer and last spring. Um, so using this, all my students have the ability to participate regardless of how many devices they have. So I think that's very beneficial if you want to use um, an instructor paste version. So just thought I'd share. No, that's a great point, Jennifer. I forgot that Kahoot doesn't show the answer. Like it doesn't show as much on the screen, but you're completely right. That's one of the benefits of quizzes. It shows the student everything, the questions, the answers, they can read it. And if you put in a picture, because I was a, um, so I taught calculus and algebra and everything in between. Sometimes I needed to put a graph. And if you put a graph, they can zoom in on it too, which was really nice because you can put an image. Um, so that was helpful for me. So, um, what we're gonna kind of do right now for the rest of our time is I'm just gonna kind of pilot through whatever we wanna look at. So this is my quizzes homepage. So off to the left is my toolbar. That's where I can create lessons. I can do more over here like the reports um, and then check my own settings. But what I wanna focus on here is the search bar and then I'll kind of run us quickly through how to create. So what Elizabeth mentioned is that this is great for if you're like sitting there and you're like, I really wish I had one more thing to put into my lesson. How can I get that? But you have like limited time. So um, we'll make this kind of like a game show, right? Anybody, anybody, can you give me a topic? A topic that you teach, a topic that you want to teach? What is our library topic? Library information? <laughs> you say library information? Yes. Okay, <laughs> library information. And we're searching quizzes library. Now, this one has a little librarian as a picture, but these are all quizzes that other people have created. So if you notice, there are 294,909 results. Now, you can filter based on grades. That was something Elizabeth also mentioned. So you can see if maybe we want to filter it specifically to the university level. Uh, that was a little bit too much. There's not as much available there. And then you can well, change found, the subject. I, I found for the university level. I figured you would. So one thing that <laughs> quizzes relies on is that the teacher who creates the quizzes, they can tag their grade, but some people don't tag the grade. So if they don't do that, mm -hmm. you might not get the right grade level. 
But if you notice, now I've hovered over these quizzes, it actually gives me a, a um, preview of all the quiz questions over here so I can decide if it's relevant to me. So like question one is what's the name of your librarian? And then how many books can third and fourth graders check out of the library? Probably not what you're looking for. Um, so if we look at maybe another one, general library information, ooh, I got ahead of myself because my computer is sensitive. The first one says the library uses blank classification for the books. That might actually be helpful for what you're trying to accomplish, depending on, is this Susan that was talking? I think it was, I can't see. Oh. Yeah. No, it was Susan. the kid. Okay. No, no, I was making sure it was Susan who was asking for library information. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. So these might be more questions that are relevant to the library. Um, depending on what you want, what you're trying to accomplish. Now, like Elizabeth mentioned, you can save the quiz here and now it'll show up in your library. You can also click on it. And if it's ready to go, like you look at it and the questions are just fine, you can just start a live quiz right now without having to edit it, do anything to it. So if you've looked at the quiz and you like it, you can just start it. Um, you can also click this edit button right here which the edit button will show will let you change the questions. So if you like some of the questions, or I'd say actually if you like the majority of the questions, then you can click edit and maybe only change a couple. You can delete some, you can change the wording. It also helps you um, right here where it says show answers. Like if you're doing um, something that maybe you just wanna double check to make sure the answers are correct, you can go through and check to make sure that the questions that were created by someone else have correct answers. So that's how you can on the fly just use somebody else's quiz. So that's one of the benefits of quizzes is that you don't have to create it yourself and take the time to do that if you don't have the time. And there really are a huge variety of topics. There can be any, like anything you can think of, there's probably a quizzes for it. Um, so I'm gonna take a second to show you how to create your own quiz too. Um, now, if you see the PDF of my presentation, I'm kind of going off away from that because I wanted to give a live demonstration, but the PDF has all the steps broken down and written down too. So if I click create over here in the corner, it asks if I want a quiz or a lesson. The lesson's in beta, so I haven't really played around with that, but if you click on quiz, it asks you to put the name of the quiz. I'm just gonna make a Harry Potter quiz and I'm going to classify it. This is where I kind of mentioned earlier, if the person who created the quiz doesn't put a tag on here, you might not be able to find it as easily, but quizzes might still exist. I'm just gonna say it's for fun. We have six options for your quiz questions. So you can do traditional multiple choice, checkbox, fill in the blank, a poll question, kind of like we saw with the would you rather, where there's no correct answer, but it's a poll question, and then open-ended. I'm this one's new, so I haven't played around with it as much, but it's like you could create a lesson with the quizzes. But I prefer to use it more as a quick check versus an actual part of a less like a, integrated into a lesson tool with quizzes. Um, so we'll just create a quick multiple choice question. Um, and I wanted to show you guys the screen because I absolutely love this. So I'm going to start with like the easy question, right? So like, what is the name of Harry's best Friend. And it shows you right here the preview of what your students are going to see on their phone. Um, I can change the font with these options up here. I can change the colors. And then for fellow math people, uh, it has a pretty good um, math type um, built into it. And um, it works really well. You can also add an image, like I mentioned before, if you wanted to add a graph or a picture of something for your course, you can add that as well as audio and video. So now I'll give some answer options. Uh, there we go. And you can give as many options as you want. It can be as few as two. And I don't know the most, but you can click clicking here and keep adding options. Then you select the checkbox for which one is your correct answer. And now we're still seeing the preview of what students would see on their devices. So if I'm happy with my question, I can either tag a topic, kind of like um, Susan was asking for the library questions. I can also change how much time I give them. Now this is a pretty easy question if you've read the book and that's kind of my assumption. So I'm gonna keep it at 30 seconds and I'm gonna hit save. And now I have my quiz question here that I've created. Now, the coolest feature to me which is what I used a lot when I was creating these in my own classroom, is this weird button called teleport, which I feel like they could have given it a better name because 
I, it's, it's kind of strange. But if I click on the teleport button, Quizzes does two things that are very smart. It recognizes my title and it searches through the entire library of quizzes. So I didn't even have to search again for Harry Potter. So let's say now I've gotten lazy. I've created my one question. I'm like, oh, I don't want to make any more. Here's this first question on this other quiz. What house was Harry Potter in? I can just click the plus sign. And now when I click over here, it's in my quiz. I didn't have to think. I didn't have to type. It's in my quiz. I can edit it if I want. I can change the time limit because this maybe might be a little harder, I guess. Um, and I can change it to a, a higher time limit. And then I can keep doing that as much as I want. So, I, and I can look through these different quizzes and keep searching through the questions. So now I see like, oh, this one, who's the author? I wanna add that. So that to me is the power of quizzes right there. It saves you time. Like Elizabeth said, it's a free service and there's so much that you can do with it and so much to play around with, but it's super user friendly in the end. And that's what's, that's what's great about it. Um, let's see, a couple other things I can say. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and exit, I'm gonna say it's done And for now. I've been able to edit, um, it, it's, it's so user friendly. I've been able to edit the quiz in between classes. I even modify, there was a question that I didn't, um, I didn't like, and so I could, you can easily change it on the fly like if you if it doesn't work for one class you can you can change it for the next class as well i have a question sure. is it time for questions yeah you can start asking questions um okay so when i do a quiz like this through cengage which is uh, the book i'm using right now if the answer was ron and i put the answer as a capital r-o-n and the student wrote r-o-n was a capital it will count it wrong Okay, um, you mean you've so, used it on quizzes? No, not on quizzes. I've used it in the Cengage oh, quizzes, okay. not this program, which is irritating because then I have to go back because I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, you know, if the, the fill in the blank was implement and they put a capital I and I put a small I for the answer, then it mm -hmm. counts it wrong. And so I have to go back and change everybody's grade, which is kind of a pain. So does this one do the same thing? or I mean, is it case sensitive like that? That's a great question. So I opened up a fill in the blank just to check um, because I haven't done, when I use quizzes in my classroom, they didn't have these other options. So I'm still on a learning curve. Um, I, it was multiple choice or nothing. So if we look at this fill in the blank, it seems like there is a question here and then you have the correct answer. So let's say the answer was wrong, but you can put in your own alternatives. So I okay. mean, you might want to put, so then you could put in your acceptable alternative answers. Of course, a student could still put in something that you hadn't expected, but I mean, you can at least kind of come up with the probably more common wrong answers or like maybe if they don't know how to spell it, they went with like R-O-N-N, -N. <laughs> but you can kind of put in your own alternative so it will accept that as a correct answer. Okay, but it does that on multiple choice also. If, so. Well, the multiple choice, um, the multiple choice, it, it, they should be picking from these answers. So there should, there should be no okay. need for them to type them in. You're right. You're absolutely right. My mind's gone. Yes. No, so that that's makes okay. Uh, yeah. It's just one of those things that it's, uh, I end up giving them all true, false, or multiple choice because I have to go back and grade everything else by hand. So it defeats the yeah. purpose. Yeah. It takes more time. I totally understand. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. No, don't apologize. This is the question time. I did think of one more thing I wanted to share and then just keep asking away. Um, when you start a quiz, um, like Jennifer said, there's, there's instructor pace. And so she's used that with success. And then classic, that's the one that I've used. Because again, when I use quizzes, very basic features, it's gone up in the last year or two. Um, so if I hit this classic view, um, you start seeing some different options, which are kind of cool. I'm going to scroll down. I, I leave this the same for the most part. Classic view. Um, it means the student's paying, playing individually. If you look further in my notes in my um, presentation, it does discuss what all three options are if you're curious. Um, but the settings are where I think you really find some good use in quizzes as well. Um, participant attempts, unlimited. You can limit that, but then students will have to log in. So I leave that alone. 
this is um, Jim kind of to your question if you don't want students to have to pick their own generated names which I know you said you don't care too much but if you don't want to see that the name factory assigns participants there some random quizzes name which is definitely user friendly um, you can also I played around with these two options show answers during activity or show answers after a lot of times I did want them to see the answers but not during. So I would sometimes do validate so they would know if they got the answers right or wrong, but it doesn't tell them what the answer is until the end. And even then sometimes if my purpose was to go over them as a class, I would set this to questions only. So that way it's not like they get the answers immediately, but I can share the answers with them still after the fact. Um, then this kind of goes into the gamification settings. If you play video games, you know you get power-ups along the way. I mean, even if you used to play Galaga, I mean, there was still a power-up you got when you got the, the two planes at the bottom of the screen. So power-ups give the, your, your students some like fun abilities to use during it. Um, I think I would probably, in the essence of time, turn this off. I think if your purpose is to make it a fun activity, you could keep it on. I tried it out myself. It gives you like... 50% more points for two minutes, or it freezes other people's answer choices. So, I mean, it's fun, but it does take time. A uh, timer allows your students to see a timer for a countdown in your question. Uh, this is what Elizabeth mentioned earlier about showing your leaderboard. If you want student privacy for this, you can turn the leaderboard off so they don't know how each other are doing. But if they have fake names, you can keep it on. It's, it's up to you and your purpose. Um, shuffle questions, shuffle answer options, that's up to you. And then this redemption question is really cool. I tried it out for myself. This is another new feature. I took a Harry Potter quiz yesterday. And granted, I am a child of the 90s and I read all the books, seen all the movies, everything. And I missed two questions, which was quite upsetting for me. Um, and the redemption question allowed me to answer one of them again. It didn't give me the chance to answer both of them again, but it allowed me to try one again. And I got it right, and so I got a higher score. So that was nice. Um, if you're into adding some humor into your activity too, uh, quizzes allows you to show memes, which means students will either get a meme that's like, yeah, you're right, you're awesome, keep going if they get a question right, or they'll get something that's just a little funny if they get it wrong, like, ooh, thought I knew that one. <laughs> so it just injects a little bit more of that humor. Um, so that's kind of, I think that's the best overview. I know it was quick. Um, I'm going to take questions. You can hang around for questions. I'm also going to let you know that I'm going to be doing some more small little um, sessions like this throughout the semester because I know some of you with Nearpod said you wanted more time or had more questions. I'm hoping I can integrate that more into the semester. So just keep an eye out and ear out and um, I'll let you know when those are coming. So if you have any questions, hang around ask away. I can push buttons. Thank you so much to Elizabeth, our fabulous faculty insight member, and uh, from Mallory from my TLC support. Um, so yeah. If one, you're one thing I noticed also about Kahoot recently is that their poll feature has changed. So you, you know sometimes we, I mean our students experience technology issues, but we also experience technology issues. So sometimes it's good to just have options. You know if, if you you know something doesn't work out on Kahoot you have you have this other option and then uh let's see Vahid I saw you had a really good question I just kind of wanted to answer it I hope you're still on um you said do you suggest trying this in the middle of semester or wait until the start of the next semester um I think just because it's so user-friendly I think if your purpose, maybe not to take a grade for it, but if your purpose is just to inject something new into your classroom and try it out, I think that it, it is applicable at any point during the semester because it's, it is so easy to look up those quizzes and your students will enjoy it. I mean, mine always did. It was just a nice break of pace for the classroom. But if your intention is maybe to take a grade on it, that might be something that you want to plan out a little bit more. I still think you could do it during the semester, but you just might want to take a little bit more planning. Um, Elizabeth, I don't know if you want to comment on that. Yeah, um, I, I feel the same way. Just, you know, if, if you're not already incorporating quizzes um, or quiz in your classroom, I would also leave it for later. But also, yes, absolutely try it out now because the more you get ex experience with it, the 
um, the more I think you'll come to love it and want to incorporate more. Um, so, and it also has a whole bunch of uh, library banks that I rely on heavily. And so I, I think you're going to really like this feature. Oh, and um, real quick, just an administrative side. Um, April is also part of our TLC now. Um, and she reminded me that I needed to put the survey link in the chat because I forget every single time. So let me do that real quick. Um, so um, I'm going to keep talking about quizzes, but if you wouldn't mind filling out this survey either right now or at a later time, um, the TLC Center, which is putting on these webinars at Palo Alto, we would greatly appreciate any feedback that you have for us. So thanks for catching that, April. Susan, what's up? So um, I have a number of breaks in my PowerPoint that I routinely use in the classroom, both face-to-face -face and in Zoom. Uh, and it's more like, you know, just click here to say yes that you're here, click, um, you know, click in chat and write a database or what you think a database is. Um, how many quizzes do you recommend within an hour and, what is it, hour and 45 minutes? This might be actually, and I don't know if um, she's still on the call because I can't see the names right now since I'm sharing my screen, but uh, Jennifer had mentioned that she had used the um, instructor paste version. I think that could be something you could play uh, around with because you could create one quiz, but maybe you wouldn't go on to the next question until later on in the unit or later on in your lecture. Okay. I don't know, Jennifer, is that a possibility with the instructor pace? Because I haven't done that part yet. So, sorry, I missed the original question, but when I used it, like I actually just used it this past week to do an exam review. So the whole class period was just the quiz and I had 40 questions and having them answer it and then me doing like a short explanation to make sure everyone was on the same page took about an hour. So if that gives you kind of the and, idea of how I use that. Well, they it gives me an idea, but what I'm asking is, um, because I'm a one-stop shop, so to speak. Uh -huh. I go into classrooms, I show them how to work, uh, how to get on the library's homepage, all the features of the library's homepage, how to get into databases, um, the basics and the uh, advanced features and databases. Um, and throughout my, because I really don't see the people. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I can judge when I'm face to face, whether, right. the, whether the students yeah. are catching this or they've just totally blown me off <laughs> you know uh, yeah. but being that i don't do that i've incorporated it with zoom, within the zoom powerpoint that i do um are you still here uh type <laughs> yes do you have any questions i have answers um what do you think of databases that type of thing so if i'm going to use quizzes how many quizzes should I use? Well, I, see. I think the reason why I was asking Jennifer that question, Jennifer, when you did the instructor led, did you, you had to push to get to the next question? Yeah, you did. Right? Okay. Um, so, you know, you could just share your screen, ask a question, and then go back to your PowerPoint, switch back, and then switch again when you want to ask another question. Um, so oh. I, I think that's what you were getting at right there. So you have yeah. one quiz that okay. they join. And then when you think it's time to ask the next question, you just go ask the question. You don't even have to switch your screen because that's the nice thing. They don't have to see your screen. You can just true. ask the question. It appears if they're still logged in to the quiz, um, it'll just appear on their screen. So um, I think that would be helpful. Another way you could do it is rather than using a quiz or quizzes, you could use a poll in Zoom, and I think those are helpful. You have the questions pre-planned, and when you're ready to run a poll, you can just pop it up and make them participate to see if they're still listening type thing. Um, so Is that's another. Yeah, throughout the, I need to check for understanding for certain things like, do you understand the research process? Can you mm -hmm. narrow your topic? Um, mm -hmm. 
can you evaluate resources? These are now things that I have to check during my lesson. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that either option will work just fine. And actually, I think this kind of answers, I saw uh, Vahid, you put another question in the chat. Um, the, if you use the classic mode, right? The classic mode just goes from one question to the next. So the student is leading their pace. As they're answering it faster, they're moving faster. But the instructor pace, that is where you could take a second to maybe ask two questions, break, ask two more questions later and break. But um, I agree kind of to piggyback off of what Jennifer said. Um, Susan, it's a, I think you have a few different tools that you can kind of play around with and see which one works best for you too. Because um, if it's a poll question, Zoom poll is pretty, e it's pretty quick. Um, just to say like, hey, are you understanding what we're saying? Like, do you need more help? But then quizzes could be more of a supplement to that to where like if you asked it, if you said something that was important, like where is a certain resource located, you or what is a database, because I think that was one of the things you said, that would be where quizzes would probably be more useful. I wouldn't make too many quizzes for one lesson. If the point was to ask some questions and come back to it, I think I would use the instructor pace because you could do that, ask questions, pause, come back to it. Um, but I don't think I would use too many quizzes in one session or else you're gonna have a lot of students logging in, forgetting where the passcode was. And then guys, the one thing I didn't say about quizzes that is a great new thing, they changed their website name. Thank goodness. Have you ever tried telling uh, like 50 freshmen it's Q-U-I-Z-I-Z-Z, -I -Z -Z, and they had to type it in right? I mean, that was a challenge, let me tell you. So they changed it to join my quiz, which I was like, thank you, where was this? <laughs> so luckily it is a little easier for people to join, but I still wouldn't recommend creating too many for one session. Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, no problem. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions, oh, see something in the chat. Okay. There's no more questions. Then I say we take a take a break for the day and you guys have a wonderful day and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about quizzes. I hope you try it out. Just play around with it. It's really fun once you get started. And um, yeah, just let me know if you need any help. Let, send me a quizzes if you want me to try it out before your students try it out. And I will be reaching out to you guys with a YouTube link and uh, the PowerPoint presentation um, either later today or on Monday. So thank you again. You guys have a great Friday and a great weekend. Bye.